years. At 19 years old, I was battling a genetic disease called polycystic kidney disease, or PKD. And I was too sick to be placed on the transplant waiting list, but I needed a kidney to survive. A dear family friend stepped forward and donated her kidney, and because of that, I'm still alive today. Kidney has been a common word used in our family until last October when I was diagnosed with primary sclerosing cholangitis, or PSC. Because of PSC, scarring has formed in the bile ducts of my liver, and I continue to get infections. I've had sepsis six times in the past year and a half, and I'm in desperate need of a liver. The past six months have been intense with repeat infections and the need for me to receive daily IV antibiotics in order to survive. After going through the liver transplant evaluation, I was added to the national transplant waiting list last month. Even though I'm not new to receiving a transplant, I'm new to being on the waiting list and learn quickly how scary it can be. California has one of the longest wait times. At the stage I am at, it could take six to nine months for me to receive a liver transplant. What that means is for me is that I need to continue to get sicker, keep enduring daily antibiotics with the risk of becoming resistant to them and more infections in order to move to the top of the wait list in California. With PSC and my complications, six to nine months might be too long. Because of this, people travel outside of our state to receive a transplant. Now my husband and I face the decision of whether we pick up our lives and move out of state for a couple months in order for me to get a liver transplant. And this is not an option that everybody can pursue. It's a huge decision. But if I can receive a transplant in several weeks at another state versus waiting and possibly not surviving here in California, then we are going to do what we have to do to keep living. The big picture with all of this is that I fully understand and appreciate post-transplant life as I've been living with a kidney for over 15 years. I have seen firsthand and experienced the miracle of transplantation every day. I know how good life can be post-transplant, and I just want to get there now with my liver. But I can't do that if more people do not register to be organ donors. I've been able to do extraordinary things with my second chance at life. And it has taught me how much the little things matter. And that is why I so badly want and need a liver transplant. For the opportunity to continue to advocate, grow old with my husband, to enjoy our home together, and keep seeing beautiful sunsets from our front porch. I just want more time to enjoy the little things and be with my family. Sometimes life can be that simple but it can't continue for some of us without you saying yes to organ donation. If more people join the registry, more transplants might be available and more lives would be saved. It is really hard for me, my family, and the other 21,000 California people waiting in fear. My life depends on a family like the one you will hear from next. Someone who said yes to organ, eye, and tissue donation and made life possible for another. It could be your mom or dad, child or neighbor, who like me might need a transplant someday. I hope my story helps to illuminate the shortage and will inspire you to join the registry and help those of us waiting in California for a transplant and a second chance at life. It is an honor to introduce the next speaker, who is an incredible donor father, Chip Atkins.